All righty. So let's get back into uh, creation. Um, last week we taught on Eve, the mother of all living. And then uh, we started on creation. Um, after that, we're going to do, we, I, got, I got my four weeks planned out. We're going to do Cain and Abel. And then we're going to do the, uh, the flood and the ark. So following along with your Bible reading, um, you should be able to follow right along. So uh, let's turn to Genesis. If you would, in your Bibles, if you brought your Bible, Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. And uh, I got my clock today, so I'm not going to be going like wondering what Brother Rick's question could be, possibly. It scares me when Brother Rick and Brother Harry would ask me a question. Because those two guys are uh, skilled veterans, and uh, they could really, they could make me look bad. But um, did everybody get a bulletin this morning? Everybody that wanted one got a bulletin? Okay. If you do, look in there, uh, in the bulletin, if you get a chance today. Uh, I'm introducing uh, Chris and Harry this Sunday, and then next Sunday I'll be inter- introducing Grandma and Grandpa, uh, Mom and Dad, as they want to be called. Uh, here's the problem. Okay, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. All right. I've been married to Tina for almost 25 years next year. I've known bro- Brother Rick the whole time, and uh, I just know him as Brother Rick. I've known him that for forever, so I'm trying to t- call him Grandma and Grandpa, and uh, him and Miss Dorothy, or Mom and Dad, and um, but uh, work helped me on that. But, but I, I love him, and uh, I've known Brother Rick for, for a long time, known Brother Harry for a long time, but uh, I'm just trying to introduce you to him. Uh, Brother Harry is uh, quiet. Um, He's uh, soft-spoken, but uh, he's not. He, 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 his adventures in uh, being a Christian are, are unbelievable. If you get a chance sometime to talk to him and talk about his history. Um, and uh, due to a tragic uh, roofing accident, uh, Brother Harry is literally not all there. <laughs> he lost his spleen. So I always tease him that he, he's not all there. They were in the, I think he went in to get a surgery or something, and, and they, they actually wrote it on his chart, missing spleen, like they discovered something or something like that. They're like, hey, this guy's missing his spleen. So, uh, but literally, uh, Chris has been telling us for years that Brother Harry's not all there, and um, he is literally not all there. And, um, but, yeah, so uh, get to know them. And then uh, next, next week we'll have Rick and Dorothy, Brother Rick and Miss Dorothy, and they will be in there, well, my mother-in-law and father-in-law. And uh, you get to learn a little bit about them. So Genesis chapter 1, we're going to do an overview real quick. Um, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 5 and 8, the words, And the evening and the morning were the first day. This actually meant that it was a, a, a real day. So God created all this in one day. So every, every day that he, he created something, he talked about uh, the evening and the morning were the first day. So um, we talked about the first day. Genesis chapter 1, verse 3 and 5. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Now just remember this, when you're, when you're trying to do your Bible reading, try to see Jesus in everything. Try to see our, our, our transformation when we got saved. Try to, try to see that in everything. Because it talked about how um, the earth was without form and without void. That's the way we were before we got saved. We didn't know where we were going. We didn't, uh, a lot of things didn't mean a lot to us. Uh, we, we had a lot of misunderstandings. And, and when we got asked Christ in our heart, there's a change that comes about us. And all of a sudden, it's kind of like things start to make sense. And we also have the Holy Spirit that we can call upon to help us make sense of things. So just remember that. Try to, try to see God in everything. I, I think, man, I, I think you can see Jesus through this whole book. And I think that's the way it's supposed to be. Um, <clears throat> in verses 2, talked about void without form. Now we're going to talk about the second day. Okay, let's look at uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 6 through 8. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven... And the evening and the morning were the second day. So basically God's talking about how he made the waters, and then he made the line, the horizon, and then that separated it from the heavens, and, and also the, the sky that we see. Now, it's very interesting that salvation is pictured on the first day. Then water comes on the second day. Funny story. Um, my daughter, Maisie, hasn't been baptized. 
and um, we're going to get her baptized. We're also going to get Ben baptized. We're going to build a baptistry at this church. We're going to probably put it in the basement. And um, because I don't know if, if I have the room up here, and I don't know if the floors would support the weight anyway. I'd have to have my friend from work, Sean, come over and put a bunch of high beams underneath the floor and, and uh, try to do things like that. But, but we are going to build a baptistry, and I think we're going to build it downstairs. I think we're going to have a, a small a baptistry down there, and then we're going to have a changing room. So that's one of the future things, future needs for Swanton Baptist Church. Because when we start going out in the community, and we start knocking doors and start visiting people, we're going to get some people saved. And the first commandment is baptism after you get saved. Yes. Now, for those of you that don't know this, let me, let me just, uh, this is a commercial for Baptists. John the Baptist, baptized people. The reason that uh, Baptist people, we believe in baptism, is because number one, it was in the Bible. Number two, it's an outward profession of your faith. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> if I'm, which, bad example, if you're married, I forgot my ring at home. <laughs> If you're married and you're wearing a wedding ring, that shows everybody that you're married. Okay, they see that ring and they, they know you're married. They say, oh, he's married. Oh, she's married. They weren't there when you got married. They weren't there uh, when it happened, but they see that you are married. That's what baptism is. It shows people that you got saved and that you were serious about it and you meant it. Now, the reason we submerge is because we believe it's a symbol. It's a symbol of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Picture this. Get baptized. Christ died. Bloosh. Under the water. We don't hold him under that long. Third day, he arose. Okay? And that's what it's showing. That's what it's a symbol of. Okay? Baptism, uh, we believe, and the Bible shows this, that it doesn't wash away your sins. It doesn't take anything away from you. Um, it's tap water. It's normal tap water. It's uh, regular water. It doesn't. What, what, what takes away your sin, what lets you get to heaven when you die, is salvation, accepting Christ your personal Savior. That's what does it. So that's why we're Baptists, because we baptize people. But, I mean, it's, 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 it's one of our things. It's, it's very close in our faith. So that's, um, that's my uh, commercial for baptism. Water is always the second thing. In fact, it follows deliverance in the Bible. Check this out. Another cool thing. When the Jews were delivered from bondage by the blood, then what did they cross? They crossed the Red Sea. Okay, when the children of Israel were let out of bondage from Egypt, after they put the blood over the doorposts, they, they, put, they put it over here and on the side, and then the death angel passed by, and then later on, Pharaoh let them go. They were delivered. The first thing they did is they crossed the Red Sea. After, after, after uh, salvation, water always comes second. In John 1, it tells us about his being the Lamb of God. In John chapter 2, he performs a miracle in Cana turning the water into wine. Water always comes second. Notice blood first, water in second. In the tabernacle, there was a brazen altar as you entered. The second piece of furniture was the laver for the washing. That's what they did. When they went into the tabernacle, they committed, had sacrifices, and they sacrificed animals on the altar as an uh, uh, atonement for sin, to ask forgiveness of God. And the next thing they did after they sacrificed the animal, the perfect animal with no blemish, i.e. Jesus, he was perfect, no blemish, nothing wrong with him. After they did that, the second thing they did is they washed their hands, cleaned their hands up. First blood, then the water. Okay? So, and it's pretty cool because the first thing um, after, after the light, which is, you know, picture of salvation, next thing was the water. God created the, the water and things like that. This is carried out through the entire, the bottom, entire Bible. When 3,000 were saved on Pentecost, guess what happened next? They went in the water. They got baptized. When Lydia was saved, she was baptized immediately. The same is true with Philip, the eunuch, and others in the Word of God. And making the second day of the water was setting a pattern that he'd fulfill throughout the whole, whole world and throughout the whole Bible. Started it right from the beginning. I mean, how cool is that? He just set it up. And that's why people, I think like uh, when you talk about creation... And you talk about atheists that they, they try to poke holes in the creation and they try to shoot it, you know, shoot it full of holes. If they can take the foundation of your house and they can take your foundation out, pretty soon your whole belief system falls and they win. And that's why they love attacking creation and they love attacking, you know, dinosaurs and different things like that. Because if they can disprove that, then all this is is some book that, you know what I mean, means nothing to, to, to anybody. And that's why they love to attack it. The third day. Genesis chapter 1, verse 9 through 13. On the third day, 
And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he the seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed. Now, a lot of people that um, smoke certain kind of illegal drugs, they love this verse because they think that, you know what I mean, well, God made it, it's okay to smoke it, okay? Whew. Anyway. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. It's very interesting that plant life appeared on the third day. Three in the Bible is God's number of the Trinity. It's also the number of the resurrection. Jesus was raised after three days. Now check this out. I think this is cool because you can learn creation. You can you can you could teach a Sunday school class just by learning. First came what? Salvation. First came the light. Okay? What came second? Second after you get saved, what happens to you? You're supposed to get baptized. What came on the second day? Water. Cool. Third day. Third day came uh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It's the Trinity. Uh, the tree. Okay? And that's how you can remember it. And also the number of the resurrection. Jesus was raised after three days and three nights. So on the third day you can think about that. You can think Jesus, what else was three days and three nights? Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights. Oh, hey, Jesus was in the earth three days, three nights. Okay, the resurrection, uh, crucifixion, third day, plant life. You can think about the tree. Um, in 1 Corinthians 15, he chose to liken the resurrection to a planting of a seed and is coming forth of the earth. Hence, he tells us that on the third day, plant life appeared. As a picture, after three days and three nights, Jesus would rise from the dead. So number one is light. Salvation, number two is water, number three, third day was plant life, okay? Now the fourth day, Genesis 1, verse 14 through 19. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. And then he made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. So it's telling you it's his fourth day. The sun and the moon and the stars became visible. The sun, the sun in the sky, that represents Jesus Christ. Okay, see Malachi chapter 4, verse 2. Let's check that out. Brother Rick, can you read that for me? Hmm? Oh, okay. Anybody else, Brother Harry, you got it? Malachi chapter 4, verse 2. Praise the Lord. So, um, the sun represents Jesus Christ. The moon then shines at night and represents all the Christians shining collectively together during the darkness. Each is to let his own light shine in a world of darkness. So we're supposed to let our light shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. It, this, we did this on Christmas Eve. Uh, when, we let the one, when one person lets their light shine, it, how much light it gives off in a dark and dying world. People will watch you. They will watch how you work. They will watch where you go. They will watch what you what and, and look at what you do. They will especially watch you when trouble comes. They will watch and see how you handle it. And they'll notice something different about you. They'll say, hey, this guy handles trouble a little bit different. And then when they go through trouble, possibly they'll say, hey, Brother Scott, how come you go through all this trouble, but you don't let it bother you? Kenny, how come you go through all this trouble but you have such a, you have a smile on your face. Uh, ben, how come you go through all this trouble, but you just keep coming to church and you don't, you don't ever give up? Let your light shine. People are watching, okay? This world is so dark. Don't, 
I, I don't even watch the news anymore. Seriously, when they had that uh, shooting in France, I learned about it. I just learned about it yesterday. Okay, that's how bad it is. I, I just I don't watch the news anymore. I don't even watch the weather. It seems like sometimes that is a bad, uh, bad thing to do. Uh, not watch the weather because I'm the guy out there going, "What is going on?" You know what I mean? But, um, but I, I'm saying that to say this: it will depress you. It will bring you down. Talk radio will too. Uh, all the talk radio we listen to and different things that will bring you down. Okay, we got victory. If you accepted Christ your Savior, He's your Savior. We got victory. Victory's coming. We know at the end of the book what's going to happen. We know where we're going. Everything else doesn't matter. What matters is our family, our friends, and, le and, and letting our light shine to them. Showing them things. Showing them Christ. So let your light shine. Jesus is the sun. We're the moon. Pretty cool. Where does the moon get its light? Come on, astronomers. It gets it from the sun. The sun shines the moon on the light. The, the sun, yeah, bounces the light off the moon, and then we see that, and that lights up our sky. Okay, so just remember that. All right, we're supposed to let our light shine. Otherwise, it's going to be a dark, dark night. Uh, the fifth day, Genesis 1, 20 and 23. We'll read that. And this is uh, basically animal life. 20 and 23, 20 through 23. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth and an open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Now, are dogs going to heaven? I'm pretty sure no. Okay? But that being said, I think it's wrong to be cruel to animals. I think God is not in that. He doesn't honor that. Okay? So don't be cruel to animals. Don't be mean to them. If you're going to have one, be responsible. Be a good Christian. Take care of it. Hey, I decided to adopt this animal. I'm going to take care of it. God did create animals. Okay? So there is a special place in His heart for them. Now, so... so that's, that's what I'm saying. Some of them he created for food. Some of them, you know what I mean, after, and after, the, after the garden, that's when, you know what I mean, things went kind of uh, south for animals. But um, God still, he, he, he loves creation. He loves what he made. He loves the animals. He loves the outdoors. Sometimes that's where I think you can really see him. The sixth day. Let's do Genesis chapter 1, verse 24 through 31. Going to be a little bit of reading here. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and of every tree in which the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for me. And to every beast of the earth, and every fowl of the air, to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and was so. So basically it's telling you there that man didn't eat meat in the garden, he didn't eat the animals, and he made it so that the animals could eat. He made herbs and things like that so they could eat too. He made that their meat. That was their protein. That was what sustained them and kept them alive. And God saw, in number 31, and God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. The sixth day, God's creation of man took place on this day. Six is man's number in the Bible. Okay? So that's easy. What did God create on the sixth day? Man. Okay? It's, God's, it's man's number. Man was created. He did not evolve. He did not come from a monkey. It's, my Bible tells me that he created us. This truth is expressly declared. Jesus himself confirmed this in Matthew 19.4 and Mark 10.6. we got time. Let's look at Matthew 
Matthew chapter 19, verse number 4, New Testament. And it says, And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And let's go to Mark chapter 10, verse 6. Matthew, Mark. Mark chapter 10, verse 6. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. Someone said that there is such a gulf between the lowest man and the highest man. Evolution cannot be true. There is such a difference. From the lowest beast to the highest beast, there can be found all kinds of transitions. From the lowest man to the highest man, there can be found all kinds of transitions. The gap between the highest beast and the lowest man is so much greater than any other gap. It would be an impossibility for man to be evolved. Okay? So it, 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 it's, you, you can prove it and disprove it and try to say all you want to say. And you can believe what you want to believe, but I'm going to, I'm going to believe this book because this book has never let me down, okay? And, and it's never done me wrong. And God's never done me wrong. And He's never lied to me. He's never given me more than I can handle. He's always, I can give you example after example how God's taken care of me through life. I'm talking whether it's I didn't have any money and He made our, met our needs and met a bill. I'm talking about where I needed a job. I'm talking about where... Uh, driving my service truck, God's kept His hand on me. I'm talking where I've been working on something and God's kept His hand on me. Um, quick story, my friend Doug at work. This is how God works, okay? <laughs> Seriously. Um, he's working on this dump truck at work, one of the big quarry trucks. And he's got the bed in the air, okay? Now, in order to have the bed in the air, they make these pins, these big steel pins that you pin the bed up, okay? And they will hold the weight so the bed will not come down and crush you. My friend Doug, they make pins for those, okay? They're actual pins. They're hardened pins. They're made for that. Doug can't find the pins. So he goes, goes into the junk bin, grabs a pin that he thinks will work, sticks it in there. Works all day long, okay? Gets time to go to lunch, goes up to lunch, gets, stops at Wendy's, has a Frosty fries and a, maybe a, uh, what's another, Baconator? And then... Uh, Gets in his truck, drives back to the job site. Comes to the job site, starts looking at the truck. Hey, the bed's down. Pins broke. Dropped the bed. God kept him safe. God protected him. That's what I'm talking about. How many times has God protected you that you don't even know about? That was something you knew about. How many times has God put, a, put his hand out so uh, maybe you were late? Maybe you were late. Maybe you were late. Maybe you're, you know what I mean? You're, ah, why are we so late? Hey, if... Five minutes earlier, and you would have been through that intersection when that semi, his brakes failed, and he went through. Right. Ten minutes later, you would have held someone else up. Maybe he was using you, you know what I mean, to hold someone else up. We don't know. When we get to heaven, we'll be able to find out, and I can't wait to ask him. All right? The, um, man was made in the image of God. Let's check this out. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Man was made in the image of God. And God said, let us make man in our image. Now, our. Who's our? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They were all there in the beginning. Okay? So Jesus was there in the beginning. He was there from the beginning. Let's make man in our image, after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. God is a trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Man was a tri-unity also. Man is spirit, soul, and body. The spirit is that part which fellowships with his creator and gives him God consciousness. The soul is that part which gives man self-consciousness, life, and distinguishes him from plants which have unconscious life. The body is that which we see and feel. My, uh, my uncle, uh, he was a pastor and uh, a preacher and uh, probably for 20-some years. And he would always tell his kids. I remember him always telling us, my cousin and, and um, my cousin Robbie and my cousin Robin. He would always tell me, he'd say, kids, this is a box. This is just like a cardboard box. He goes, the soul inside, he goes, that's what's important. He goes, when anything happens to me and when I go on before you, He's like, this is a box. Just remember that. He said, when you're at the casket and you're staring me in the face, I'm not there anymore. 
I'm with Jesus. My soul is gone and that's where I'm at. And I swear that brought comfort when he passed away. That brought comfort to my cousin Robbie and my cousin Robin. When he, when he was taken away from us and Jesus took him home, I, I, Robbie, I remember standing next to the, to the casket and, and Robbie telling me, they said, man, Dad would always tell us that this is just a box. This old body is just a box and it's just going to fade away and it's going to go back to the earth that it was created from and not to worry. And that will give him strength. So just remember that. There are three parts to man. Okay, the, the, the body is very important. Okay, because we can, God can use our bodies to do things. He can use us to witness to people, work in the church, earn a living for our family, things like that. We should take care of our body. I think the body is a temple. We should take care of it. We should exercise. We should watch what we eat. We should watch what we put into our body. Um, but the most important thing is the man's soul. Now, um, only three actual creative acts of God are recorded in this chapter. The word create is mentioned in the truest sense only three times. When God created the heaven and the earth, Genesis 1.1, God created the heaven and the earth. When God created animal life, Genesis 1.21, and God created the great whales. And then when God created human life, 127, it says, and God created man in his own image. Actually, he created the heaven and the earth, which included plant life, and which included the sun, the moon, and the stars. <clears throat> this, no doubt, was created in the dateless past. Then when the seven days came, he simply made that which was created to appear. The word create, as is used in these three instances, mean to make something from nothing. The other words mean to make visible or to make something. For example, it's one thing to create a table, and it's another thing to take some wood and make a table. We think we make things like we, uh, oh, I built this pulpit or I built these pews, uh, I built this building. But the Creator, He created the wood. He created the water. He created these things we use to make stuff. So that's, that's far more important than what we could ever do. Worship the Creator. Don't worship the creation. Worship the one that has the power to make these things, make these things into existence. Um, to create a table would mean that there's nothing there and then a table appears. To make a table means to take the wood there and make the tables made. God created the heaven and the earth. God created animal life. God created man. He created all the other things too, he, but He did so in verse number 1. This means that in the dateless past, God created the heaven and the earth. How many years, centuries, or millenniums later He created man? We do not know. But we do know that when He created man, He created him from nothing. Now, many reminders of Jesus Christ are found in the early verses of the Bible. And this is what I was telling you about. Genesis 1.1, in the beginning. Revelation 22.13 says, Jesus is the beginning. In the beginning, God. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 says, He is the mighty God. In the beginning, God created. John 1.3 says, Without Him was not anything made that was made. In Genesis 1.2, we find the word waters, just like Jesus is the living water. See John 4, 14, in verse number 3, we find the word light. Jesus is the light of the world. See John 8, 12, and again, we could find pictures of the Lord Jesus Christ in creative acts. You can look all through here in the creation. You can see, things, see Jesus. The creation of woman. Let's check this out. This is when the trouble began. Just kidding. <laughs> Genesis chapter 2, verse 21. I'm thankful for women. I'm thankful that God created my wife and uh, created women, and I'm telling you, women, uh, my, uh, my first Sunday school teacher was a woman, it was my mom, and um, just women are special, and God knows it. Uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 21 and 22, <clears throat> and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from a man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. Now, woman was taken from a rib of man and brought to man. This is contrary to the teachings of our day, but it's certainly biblical. She was made to make man complete and to be a help me to him. She was not made to cause him problems. She was made to help him solve problems. And that's true. I mean, if, you, it, 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 if you're married and you have a significant other, your woman, she helps you solve problems. Amen. What am I going to eat? Duh, the whole refrigerator's full. 
How are we going to get all this stuff done? No problem. I got this all laid out. We're going to do this, 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 and this. Honey, what, how, does this look okay? Should we hang it here? What are the right colors? What are this? What are that? She'll help you with those things, Ben. Remember that. Okay? <laughs> they, 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 she, she was not caused, or she was not made to cause problems. Remember that, woman. Proverbs 31 talks about the Proverbs 31 woman. She does him good all the days of her life. Okay, that's what the Bible says. She's supposed to do him good, not evil. She's not supposed to conspire to do things to, to wreck his life. Or She's not out to get you, fellas. Okay, that's what I'm trying to tell you. She, yeah, they're trying not to. They, they could ruin us. They could ruin us, Brother Harry. They could ruin us. Kenny, they can ruin us. They can make or break us. Huh? Yeah, yep, yep. So that's, that's our study on creation. Um, it is... 1036, so we're going to take about 10 minutes and we're going to talk about Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel. Now, first was Adam and Eve. Next came Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel were Adam and Eve's uh, sons. Alright? Remember, they, uh, they, were in the, they were in the garden. Everything was perfect. They decided to eat of the tree of fruit of knowledge and they tried to, thought they were going to become smart. They decided to commit a sin. And uh, one of the next things that uh, Eve had to do, she had to go through childbirth. That's horrible. Horrible pain. Horrible uh, things like that. He could have just created sons. He just could have done all that. But they were out of the garden now. So they were out in the real world. Um, I'm going to try to teach you that, that with Cain and Abel, that um, with your own personal choice determines your relationship with God. Okay, you got to make a choice. You know what kind of relationship you're going to have with God. Am I going to have a good relationship? Am I going to have a hot and cold relationship where one week I'm loving God and the next week I'm not? Your relationship with God depends on you. Same way in a marriage, your relationship depends on you. Depends upon what you put into it. Relationship with God depends upon what you put into it. What you're willing to sacrifice, time, money, uh, friends. I was just talking to a friend of mine this week, um, a really good friend of mine. I've known him for, uh, let's see, Toby's 22, so I've probably known him for 18 years. And he was talking how um, he, uh, he went to a party, and um, it was at his good friend of his that he'd known from the service. And he went there, and there was a band, and there was alcohol, and there were different things like that. And he looked at his wife, and he's like, you know, he's like, how long can we stay until we, we, we don't look rude? He goes, I don't want to leave right away, but they only stayed about 10 minutes. And he'd known this guy forever. And, and, and I'm saying that to say this, uh, it'll cost you something. Your relationship with Christ could cost you friends. It could cost you, it could cost you family sometimes. I know people that their family, they, they just hate them because, you know what I mean, what, they, they go to serve God. and they, the, Sometimes they'll even have stuff on Sunday just so they can't go. You know what I mean? They'll be like, well, we'll just make everything on Sunday. See if they, they, see if they'll make them choose between you and God. That's a great, great job, family member. You really love them. You're making them make that decision. Anyway, um, so your relationship with, um, with God depends upon what you're willing to put into it. Think of two objects that begin their existence exactly the same properties, but have an entirely different end. I'm talking about Cain and Abel, okay? We could draw up this illustration like saying, um, let's say two drops of water. Two drops of water, H2O, they both came from the same place, they came from the same cloud. Two drops of rain falling down to earth. Um, each of the same chemical properties, H2O, each of them are made up the same makeup, Cain and Abel, same makeup, same mommy, same daddy, okay, same blood. Um, I think uh, me and Dakota, we're uh, O negative, and uh, then the rest of the kids, are, I think they got Tina's blood, blood type, but, but things like that happen. But, but same blood, same blood coursing through their veins, same thing like that. Um, one drop of water lands in a swift moving mountain stream. It just takes off, and it's always moving, it's always going, it's always growing. It's just, it's replenishing. The, the other one into a deep pond that has no inlet or outlet, and it just stays there. It just stays there in that pond. They're both the same, both came from the same cloud, but both took different directions. The first drop of water remains clear and pure, serving its purpose of supplying good water. The second drop of water becomes infested with algae and dirt because of stagnant conditions of the water. You got to have movement in a pond, okay? Talking about a body of water. Seems like if you don't um, put one of those windmills up 
and put an airline into it, or you don't have something that agitates it, maybe fish or things like that, water always becomes stagnant. Okay, flowing water doesn't become stagnant. Okay, so remember that. If, you're, if, if you want to liken your life to water, you want to be moving. You want to keep moving. I see these guys all the time that they, they work their whole life and they retire and then they do nothing. And then what do they do? Seems like they're, they're dead in like two years. They're dead like in a year. And then I see these other guys that I've worked with, they, 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 they retire and they're like, man, I need to come back to work. They're like, my wife has got me so busy and all these grandkids and all these things and all going to all this stuff. And all I tell them every time is keep it up. Keep moving. Don't stop moving. Don't stop reading. Don't stop learning. It seems like uh, when you stop uh, reading and learning and doing things, when you don't have a purpose, that's when you just sit in that chair and, and you, just, you, you just deteriorate. You get weaker and weaker and, and keep working. Man, 40 is like, or 50 is like the new 40. 60 is like the new 50. Don't, don't limit yourself. I'm, I'm serious. I'm going to try to do this. My wife, I come home and, and I'll be feeling sorry for myself and be like feeling like I'm old. And she'll be like, you stop that. You're not old. And, and, and that's the way we need to be. We need to quit being that way. Okay, let's quit doing it. Anyway, um, stagnant water. That's where I was. So um, if, you, if you get stagnant, you're, you're going you're gonna to die and you're just going to stagnate. and You're not going to do anything for God. Now, both of these drops of water were from the same place. We've got four minutes. Um, we're going to compare the lives next week, probably, of two brothers. We'll see that each person who has ever lived on earth has had the same opportunity for salvation and everlasting life as every other person. Every person on earth has had the chance for salvation and the chance for everlasting life. You know how many times, Brother Harry, I'm walking through the store and I'm walking through... Uh, factories or any place I go where there's a ton of people and I, I just sit back and I think I think man I am so blessed that my mom brought me to church and I got to be saved and I got to know where I'm gonna spend eternity you know how blessed I am to know that you know how blessed you are if you're saved this morning how how blessed you are to know that man it's just amazing um, every person has had that we're gonna discuss Cain and Abel as we read from them in Genesis chapter 4 Let's check this out. We're going to go through. I'm going to try to get through a couple points. We're going to, I'll probably have to reiterate next week. They were born with the same parents. Number one, Adam and Eve were the father and the mother of Cain and Abel. Number two, Cain was the firstborn. Abel was Cain's younger brother. They had the same parental training. Okay? And I've, you've got to watch yourself on this. Uh, Chris and Harry, how many kids did you have? Two. Two. Um, you've got to watch it because... Uh, Kenny, you'll find, you'll probably, you, me and you have already discussed this. Toby is my oldest, and we were so hard on him that like he is like uh, when he meets a girl, it's going to have to be a girl that's like four or five years more mature than him because he was always, you know, Toby, do this. Toby, do that. Toby, uh, I need this. Toby, I need your brother's hat. I need your sister's uh, backpack. I need your, you know, he was running around doing things. I, can, I have videos of when we had Christmas at our house. This little guy is like eight years old, <clears throat> okay? Everybody's tearing their presents open. The other two kids could care less about the mess. Toby's actually running around picking up the mess. He's picking up the papers. I can see him throwing them in the garbage bag. Hasn't even opened all his gifts yet, but it's just he knows, you know what I mean? That was instilled in him in a young age. you got to be careful about these kids it's hard not to be hard on the first one and then easy on the second one and then even easier on the third one. It was bad for us because Toby was there and then we were, we were, we, we were easier on Dakota and I can tell a difference now the way he's in his life. And then Maisie was the little girl. Aw, ain't she cute? Aw, little girl. Oh, we had boys that were so rough. And Don't you touch her. That's my little girl. I don't know. We ain't whip, I, ain't whip. I can't whip her, Tina. Are you kidding me? She's a girl. So just be careful. Anyway, Cain and Abel had the same parents, and, and they were uh, raised by the same parents. They had the same parental training, okay? They, 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 they probably had way better training than we had because they didn't have a TV. They didn't have a DVD player. They didn't have all these distractions. It was one-on-one -on -one time with them and mom, and, you know, them two and mom and dad. Now, they had the same home and neighborhood environment. Before the birth of Cain, Adam and Eve were banished from the Garden of Eden and had made their home in an area that was now much less beautiful than their Garden of Paradise. So their neighborhood and their environment was the same. It wasn't like one kid grew up rich, one kid grew up poor. They were both grew up in the same house. They grew up in the same neighborhood. Same neighborhood with nobody. It was just them. Mom, dad, and the two boys. There was no other bad influences. They didn't go to school. They didn't 
they didn't have Facebook, they didn't have internet, they didn't have none of that stuff. So they, 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 they both had the same amount of distractions, which were none, and um, they both had the same parents and the same environment. They had the same spiritual teachings. This is going to be the last point. Adam had obviously taught his sons concerning his first home, the temptation brought by Satan, God's curse upon the earth, and God's sentence to death upon people, and God's condemnation of Satan. Now, one thing about parents, it seems like when we, uh, when we go through something and it's life-changing, we make sure that our children are not going to go through that. Okay? We're going to make sure. You're not going to end up like me. You are not going to end up like me. Now, it's a battle because sometimes they do. Okay? And I can, I can show you this with many a single women that I know that they swear to me that their daughter is not going to turn out like them. And, Brother Harry, it's chilling how many of these daughters are now... They have a baby, and they have no daddy. And it, I don't know what causes it. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, I mean, I can't pinpoint it, but I, I have a few um, ideas. But it happens over and over again. And we, no doubt, Adam told Cain and Abel, you guys, you guys got to be careful of Satan. We had this awesome house. We had this awesome garden. We, had eaten, we were eating watermelon and cantaloupe, and we were... We were just, God was protecting us, and, and we had uh, lions and, and uh, lambs, and they were living together, and we had, uh, th there were tigers, and they didn't try to eat everything that they saw, and, and um, we, just, we just had all these things in our life, and uh, it, it was such a blessing, but we screwed up, and we listened to Satan, and Satan allowed your mom and me to take our eyes off God, and we ate the fruit, and because of that, we got kicked out of the garden. Don't be like us. Watch out for Satan. God's curse upon the earth, God's sentence to death. Adam and Eve knew God's promise to send a Savior who would become victorious over Satan. They knew that innocent blood must be shed in order for sin to be covered. Genesis chapter 3, verse 14 through 24. And we're going to, be just, we're going to, be, we're going to stop there.